Nestled within the picturesque coastal town of Laguna Beach, California, stands a storied residence that has etched its name into the area as the Betty Davis House. This historic property, encompassing both the main house and a guest house, is even included in the prestigious Laguna Beach Register of Historic Buildings. Laguna Beach has long held a special allure for actors, drawing stars like Charlie Chaplin, Mickey Rooney, and Judy Garland, who all found respite in the area with weekend homes. For Betty Davis, this house held a special place in her heart, describing it as a dream filled with antiques, wood paneled walls, and all her beloved books. Betty Davis herself remains an iconic figure in Hollywood history. She achieved several remarkable milestones in her career, notably becoming the first woman to receive the American Film Institute Lifetime Achievement Award. With 11 Academy Award nominations and two wins for her outstanding performances in Dangerous and Of Human Bondage, Davis's legacy in cinema is undeniable. Her association with the Betty Davis House during the years 1947 to 1950 is particularly significant, lining up with her Oscar-winning triumph in All About Eve. This bluff-top Laguna Beach home, once owned by the late silver screen legend, has undergone renovations and was first listed in April 2021 for $19.9 million, and later sold for $15.25 million in 2022. A subtle tribute to Davis can still be found in the form of a letter D, representing Davis, etched into a coat of arms displayed in stained glass on the front door. Some even say that if you ever take a stroll on the beach and look up at the house, there's also a BD on the chimney. This French Normandy style estate, spanning 5,472 square feet, is perched on a bluff overlooking the Pacific Ocean and beyond. Built in 1929, this architectural gem was the creation of Aubrey St. Clair, an esteemed architect of the time. The estate was commissioned by Charles Priss, a prominent figure who served as the publisher of both the past Sedina Star News and the Long Beach Press Telegram. The house features six bedrooms and eight bathrooms, providing ample space for luxury living. The master suite is a standout feature of the home, offering an interior Juliet balcony, which overlooks a grand great room. The property also includes a lookout room that provides breathtaking panoramic views and a charming breakfast nook in the modern kitchen. A private courtyard entry leads to the main entrance, a guest house entrance, and a dining terrace. From there, a staircase leads down to a sun-soaked lounge area with direct access to the beach below. Inside the house, there's a modern coastal design with many rooms offering uninterrupted ocean views. The bright and inviting kitchen is adorned with white cabinets and features an eating nook and high-end stainless steel appliances. The house is built around a central spiral staircase crowned with a grand conical roof and a spire. For those who love entertaining, the lower level offers a bar and media room, a wine cellar, a gym, and an ocean view bedroom. Additionally, there's a separate guest house, making this property perfect for hosting family and friends or enjoying the ultimate privacy. This beachfront oasis is conveniently set within a stone's throw of Laguna Beach's art galleries and boutiques, offering both a private sanctuary and easy access to the vibrant local scene. The Betty Davis house stands not only as a symbol of Hollywood history, but also as a luxurious coastal escape that captures the essence of California living. Another notable property graced by Betty Davis can be found in the heart of Beverly Hills. Situated among the palm lined streets lies a piece of Hollywood history, the historic Hanover House Mansion. This iconic villa came up for sale at $40 million in 2019. However, it's not just any mansion, it's a made to measure masterpiece that has undergone a transformation of epic proportions. Spanning an impressive 10,000 square feet, this architecturally stunning abode offers panoramic views of Beverly Hills and beyond. The grand entrance features a 30-horn Brunel chandelier. This sculptural piece is one of the many historic touches here. The property boasts two luxurious pools, a state-of-the-art movie theater, a bar, and even a full-size tennis court. One of the hallmarks of this mansion is the seamless flow between indoor and outdoor spaces. The spacious outdoor seating areas effortlessly extend from the living room, providing a serene oasis for relaxation and entertaining. Trees frame these outdoor spaces, enhancing the sense of privacy. 
Step inside and you'll find the newly renovated interiors, a blend of classical elegance and contemporary chic. The mansion boasts a total of eight bedrooms, while the master suite includes a plush king-size bed, along with a double-sided fireplace and a cozy seating area. There's also a jaw-dropping walk-in closet here. With five elegantly designed bathrooms, each reflecting a sense of opulence, residents and guests are treated to a spa-like experience in the comfort of their own home. The dining room can comfortably seat up to 14 people and features magnificent 32 light fixture chandelier with lampshades in rich velvet onyx. The open kitchen is well equipped with top-notch appliances and has sleek cabinets. The mansion features a state-of-the-art home theater where movie nights reach a whole new level of luxury, while another sitting room has a marble-clad fireplace and a high-tech Raymond sofa. The carefully crafted color scheme in Betty Davis's one-time home combined with thoughtfully chosen lighting and decor imbues the home with an ambiance that's both contemporary and inviting. After looking at a few of her homes, we'll conclude our tour to Betty Davis's glamorous mansions. But before we go, answer this question for me. Would a home on the historic register appeal to you even if it meant that the property would cost more money? Let me know down in the comments and don't forget forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer and I'll see you all in another video. Bye! Mel Gibson has been buying up and selling homes in the global real estate market for most of his life. He's owned and lived in a handful of unique properties from an old world mansion in Malibu to a tropical hideaway in Costa Rica and even an entire island at Fiji at one point. In 2019, Mel listed his stunning Malibu estate. There is no records showing that it's sold. This property boasted five beds, five baths, a French country kitchen, an airy living room with rustic wood details, and much more. While outside Inside the grounds had two pools as well as a gym. However, over the last few years, the actor and director has offloaded most of his properties or at least listed them for sale. So where he's living right now as his main residence is a little bit of a mystery. We're gonna kick things off with Mel's Malibu mansion, which had a notably old world vibe to it. This one might just be my favorite. In 2019, this property resurfaced on the market for $14.5 million after Mel had tried to sell it before in 2017 for $17.5 million to no avail. As far as we know right now, there are no records of the mansion being sold, so one could assume that Mel still owns it. This estate has a unique stone brick, stucco, and wood clad exterior, and it's set behind an electric gate as well as a thick wall of trees and greenery on nearly five and a half acres of land. The manor is tucked away in the canyons above the ocean in Malibu, California, and Mel picked it up in 2008 for $11.5 million from then married actors David Duchovny and Taylor Leone. One thing this mansion surely isn't lacking is character. There are exposed wood beams all over and stone archways to add even more charm. Inside there's 6,578 square feet of space with five bedrooms and 4.5 baths along with many spaces to entertain. A long driveway leads up to a classy motor core and attached garage with guest quarters over top. There's also an additional guest house and pool house with fitness center on the property. This home was built in the mid 1990s, but has since acquired plenty of updates and there are a ton of old world architectural details inside too, not to mention some religious artwork. The wood and glass front doors open right into a towering great room with double height and exposed beam ceilings, more archways and a bank of windows with diamond pane glass. This room also boasts a giant fireplace with carved wood crosses and rosary beads, as well as a rustic iron chandeliers overhead. There's also an office tucked into a nook of windows and nearby an airy dining room with space for plenty of guests. The French country kitchen is attached to the great room, also offering top grade appliances and bar style seating. And elsewhere, there's a library study with classic built-in wooden bookcases and another fireplace. A wood paneled family room in Mel's former home has a cozy feel with rough stone fireplace and further opens via French doors to the yard. What appears to be the master suite has a built in long window seat with leather cushions as well as French doors to a sunroom with a mix of reclaimed wood and stone walls. This bedroom also has a stone fireplace and so does at least one other guest bedroom in the manor. Both of these bedrooms have their own large ensuite baths which also offer indulgence 
instant soaking tubs. We can't forget the spiral staircase, which appears to be located in the home's turret, a feature which I really love here. Out back, there's a partly shaded al fresco dining space, and this leads to a magical path, which is lit up and winds through the trees to a multi-level terrace. This terrace is set into the hillside while there are also two swimming pools, one of which is a full regulation lap pool in addition to a freestanding spa and the aforementioned pool house that boasts a gym. Not only did the property pack in the charm, it also came with rights to the exclusive members only La Costa Beach and Tennis Club. And if you're wondering how exclusive it really is, membership fees spent a wild $100,000 with about 700 in yearly dues. While Mel has owned homes all around the world, the native New Yorker returned to the Northeast in the mid 90s after buying a remarkable property in Greenwich, Connecticut, only 45 minutes away from his hometown of Peekskill, New York. Gibson bought the home in 1994 for $9.3 million and went on to live there for 15 years before selling the residence in 2010 for $24 million. Built sometime between 1925 and 1927 by award winning architect Charles Lewis Bowman for a banker and veteran pilot, Charles L. Ostrom. Colonial Tudor style mansion features a stone exterior accented by stunning greenery. Sitting on almost 76 acres of well-kept land, the grounds include multiple fountains, flower gardens, and hiking trails, as well as an orchard and dock access to a small lake. Inside this mansion boasts over 15,800 square feet and consists of eight bedrooms and 21 bathrooms, 14 of which include a tub and shower. Originally named the Old Mill Farm, Mel Gibson renamed the mansion Wayne Manor as an homage to the DC Comics character Bruce Wayne, who the actor almost played in the 1989 film Batman. Gibson also added a few modern amenities to this house, including air conditioning and an upscale theater with emerald green velvet chairs. The mansion is full of rich and traditional Elizabethan architectural features such as oak paneled walls, intricate woodwork, 40 foot vaulted ceilings, and beautiful stained glass windows. Some of the many impressive rooms included two dining areas, a double chef's kitchen, a study, and a master suite, while there was also a tavern-like basement level below. The property boasted a tree-lined circle driveway, two greenhouses, a tennis court, a 60 foot swimming pool, as well as plenty of patio space for lounging in the sun. Along with the historic mansion and its stunning grounds additional structures on the property serve as guest houses including a fairy tale stone cottage that offers a whopping eight bedrooms on its own guests also have the option of staying in the charming and rustic log cabin tucked into the nearby woods or in another ivy covered home, which is next to the spacious horse barn. These days, the property houses the philanthropic organization Foundation House, which was created by neighbor Mimi Sternlicht in 2019 to preserve it. Mel is also said to own several spots in Costa Rica, one of which came up for grabs somewhat recently, is 400 acre beachfront paradise. This jungle getaway has been on the market for a whopping $29.5 million, and it's located in the northwestern part of Costa Rica in Nosara. Mel purchased this beautiful estate on the Nicoya Peninsula in 2007 after discovering it a year prior while they were scouting locations for his action adventure movie Apocalypto. This estate was originally built in 2002, and all of the buildings were made eco consciously to reduce their impact on the surrounding landscape. Mel's one-of-a-kind retreat is located on a hilltop consisting of three luxury villas of different sizes and set in the jungle for privacy. Throughout the home, there's 12 bedrooms and 14 baths, along with generous and comfortable living spaces. Properties all have the same design aesthetic with terracotta, coral stone exteriors and interiors, which blend Costa Rica inspired design with Spanish and Italian elements such as the tiles. The buildings have a relaxed atmosphere with plenty of glass doors and windows for natural light. Each structure has a generous layout with living areas boasting vaulted ceilings, full gourmet kitchens, and multiple terraces, views of the ocean and jungle. The largest of the villas, Casa Guanacaste, is stacked with seven bedrooms and eight baths, while the complex wraps around a central courtyard. Casa Barrigona has two beds, three baths, and a cottage by the pool, while Casa Dorada offers two beds, three baths, and a loft. 
Other amenities on this stunning estate include private swimming pools, barbecue stations, and more. The tropical getaway also has access to a secluded white sand beach in the Pacific Ocean for the ultimate escape. Despite the privacy, you could access Mel's former property by car, or if you prefer, there's a grass helipad for arriving in style. When it comes to the location, the Nicoya Peninsula is situated on the laid back northern Pacific coast of Costa Rica, which is best known for dazzling white sand beaches and the untouched jungle. It's full of solitude and serenity, as well as wildlife like sea turtles, howler monkeys, tropical butterflies, hummingbirds, and more. It's fantastic for swimming, surfing, and snorkeling, and simply just unwinding. For those who crave a little bit of civilization, the property is located close to town where there's a spread of hotels hotels, stores, bars, and restaurants. Now that we've looked at a few of movie star and director Mel Gibson's homes over the years, that will wrap up today's house tour. But before we go, answer this question for me. If you could get a vacation home in any South American destination, which would it be? Let me know your pick down in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me over on Instagram to chat. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer and I'll see you all in another house tour. Bye.